Now, I'm sure we've all watched countless videos on how to stop slicing your driver, which is loads of little tips and tricks, which I'm sure many of which are very helpful. But in today's video, when it comes to talking about this, I wanna talk about something, or talk about it in a slightly different way. Talk about something which isn't often discussed when it comes to that shot shape, that slicing of the driver, uh, something which is quite pronounced when it comes to hitting this club in particular. And if you stay tuned to the end, we're gonna discuss a couple of simple ideas and a couple of feels that you can use at the driving range to help alleviate. Anytime we have a curvature issue, given a centre strike, we have a club face issue. So as a right-handed golfer, if I'm struggling with that dread slice, so curving to the right, then I know that factually, at impact, my golf club is open. It's facing to the right. So any drills that can look to help that will obviously help the ball flight, for sure. But something I want to look at today, instead of honing specifically on the club face, is, is why. Why is that club face open? And one of the biggest factors, and something as we said at the start of the video, which is quite pronounced when it comes to hitting this golf club in particular, is the swing plane. So typically someone who has a very open club face at impact is very classically over the top and all that kind of stuff will have a very high swing plane. So what happens is when we have a very high swing plane, it will tend to want to encourage the pass to be over the top as well. So golf club moving to the left. You can also tend to want to influence the golf club to be moving quite vertically down, so quite a steep angle of attack, something which we can get away with with an iron if we are struggling with a bit of an overfade, but something which, which will simply make our fade even worse when it comes to hitting a driver. And both those things, especially the high swing plane introducing a steep angle of attack, can really help or remake really this club face uh, close a lot less. So essentially that rate of closure will be much less so coming into the hitting area and we're really going to want to hold that thing off. If I think about me being a cricket player, so cricket is played very straight up with the bat, so massively vertical, and then re holding that thing through on the way down. So lots of cricket players, in my experience, are actually slicing the ball versus tennis players. So what the tennis players do, they'll re whip the racket re around them, so a very horizontal um, swing plane, so a very flat swing plane and they'll really come on the inside, that really influence the racket or the golf club to re-release over. And a lot of tennis players, in my experience, are actually hooks to the golf ball. So we can really start to draw the dots there as to how a very vertical swing plane can, can influence a more left to right curvature and excessively flat or horizontal swing plane can actually influence more of a right to left curvature. So if we know that they're the two ends of the spectrum, we can start to think about some simple ideas as to how we can find a happy medium, especially with more of a slice of the golf ball, which many of you watching this video will be, and move more towards the, the flatter, more horizontal swing plane, and look to square that club face up, probably square the attack angle up a little bit as well, get a little bit more distance, better closure right at the club face, and hit more high draws rather than steep slices. Also sometimes seeing those sky shots as well. So before we think of a nice simple idea in a swing to help us with that shallower swing plane. Just a couple of little keys at setup. First thing, and this can again be a bit of a conceptual one at the setup, is when we are addressing the golf ball, where our handle height is. Now, with the driver, the golf club, I just let it sit naturally, wants to sit very, if you like, toe up. And a lot of people see that as a bit of a negative. So what they do is they'll raise the hands, right, that golf club's sitting nice and flat now, and then they'll grip the golf club from there. Straight away, that will influence a very vertical golf club and where we actually want the hands to sit is so that the butt end of the golf club is looking more towards the belly button so if you were referring this to an iron you'd want that more towards the belt buckle but with a driver more towards the belly button okay and that will get us or more likely get us to swing on uh, a more efficient swing plane the second thing we're looking for at setup with our driver is for the width of stance not to be too narrow so we want as a rule of thumb our width of stance to be wider than with our irons as a rough baseline, that will look like something that's a little bit wider uh, than shoulder width. If you're a bit taller, you can go even wider than that. But assuming that's wider than our, than our irons is definitely something we want to make sure we've got. If we're too narrow with our stance, we're going to swing not only much narrower in terms of, uh, of width, but we're going to be more influenced to swing much more vertically with our hands. And that therefore is going to create a much deeper swing plane, something that we were looking to alleviate in this video. So 
two things that we're really looking to keep an eye on at setup is our handle height and appropriate stance width. And we're gonna be in a pretty good place to swing that golf club much more on plane. So now we spend a bit of time chatting about swing plane and how it relates to that driver slice. And a couple of ideas at setup that we wanna make sure we're, we're keeping on top of so we've got, we've got a better chance of swinging more on plane. What we want to think about is something that's more transitional. So it's more influenced or directed at the downswing. So when you're getting set up, so remembering those set points we discussed a moment ago, I want you to swing to the top and feel like that club face is looking down towards the floor as the club head stays behind the hands. Most people are very high swing plane, very quote over the top, would look more like this, very high and over plane, and can typically be uh, related to someone with quite an open club face as well. They'll typically use this over the top move to square that club face up and you'll typically see that your over the toppers will always hit a good shot which goes straight left because that's their mechanic to square the club face up in order to do so. So to recap that, swing to the top and feel that club face looking down at the floor as the club stays fractionally behind the hands. So this would be in front, this would be behind and you're looking for the club face to be roughly a couple of degrees close to straight. So essentially at the angle of our spine. So I stand straight up like this and I'll bend at the hips, you can see how that club's changed. A really good way you keep on top of this, if you're struggling to see that, we just want to make sure, you chuck yourself an alignment stick or a golf club down the floor, underneath where the hands would be. And again, you can take yourself down to that position. Right, there's my club face, there's my hands. We'd like to start this at kind of a bit of a freezer. So kind of stopping here, getting used to what that feels like, and then hitting some from that position and building that up into more of a fuller swing. So I like uh, drill swings when it comes to making a technical change to be no more than 8% in power. So using that as a rule of thumb, once you get used to that, you can build that up and be, okay, that's where it's gotta be. Can I now hit that in one full motion? Any questions, drop me a comment, follow me on my socials, and until next time, 